Now see a short example from Jaime on how to submit a project um, through the uh, Ethereum Price Predict Challenge. I'm so excited to share this with you. Jaime, take it away. OK, thank you so much. Hello, guys. So I am going to, I would like this to be more like a conversation. And the idea is to show you one of the samples that we have uh, uh, to build a model, a basic model based on, on linear uh, on linear activations that is able to predict uh, the price of Ether for the next uh, 12 hours. This example, uh, you will find it. I'm going to share my screen one second. Pablo, I think that you are sharing your screen still. No, oh, but I, I can let me come back. Can you guys see my screen? Sorry, I, I, I don't. No, it appears that it's loading right now. Hey, let me. What? I'm going to try again. I want to open the floor real quick. Does anyone have any questions before we go through this example? OK, if there's no further questions, let's go ahead and watch Jaime's screen. I mean, uh, we can see your screen now perfectly. So initially, the first step is exactly as uh, Juan was describing uh, first. We need to do the setup. You will find the setup in the main description of the challenge. Let me share this with you. But you will see that it's necessary to have uh, as environment variables your private keys, as your private key, uh, create uh, your wallet, and this is the Alicia that uh, Juan Pablo was talking about, and to load uh, a series of helpers. We have gone through this uh, in the previous workshop, but just let me show you quickly. So basically, copy and paste all these functions that are going to help you to facilitate the work of submitting the the, the, predi the, the prediction to the to the competition. Use Open Python, copy all this there, and then they will be available for do what we need to do. The, the first thing is to create a wallet, create an instance of Ocean, right? This is what you see here. And then after that, we now have an instance of Ocean that will allow us to do the submission through the to, uh, using Ocean Pi. You have your wallet that will allow you to send those uh, transactions in the blockchain. But before submitting, you need to build your model, make the prediction, and then to submit. So this example is focused in how to build the model, right, uh, and to make the submission. The first thing to do is basically to get the data that you are going to use to do the predictions. There are several uh, ways to get the data. You can get this data from Binance, uh, from any other uh, Oracle or data set provider that, that you that you can find. You can also take data sets from Ocean directly. And this example uh, is actually taking data from, from Ocean to do this. So we have a data set, an asset that have the Ether price uh, against USDT for the previous 500 hours. Then we are going to use these 500 hours of data to build a model to predict the next 12 hours, right? The first thing, uh, once a week, collect the, the file is to use this function that is a function in the helpers that will allow you to obtain the values that are needed. In this case, it's the time stamp and the, the values that are coming with the data set that is the open price, the close price, high, low, and the volume. In here, we are going to work only with the, with the close value. So this is what this function is going to 
uh, is going to provide us. Now, once that we have this, uh, the values that we need and the timestamps, we just need to transform this to units that are the ones that the, the competition are, is, required, is required, and to create a, a data frame. Now, this data frame is, is, is in particular created as input to the algorithm that we are going to use in this example that is called profit. Now, before going there, let me, let me talk about profit and the intuition behind, behind this. I'm just going to close my screen and open it again to show you another window. You guys see this? Yes. OK. So don't get scared. It's not as complicated as, as it looks. Just imagine the panel that we have here on the left is a signal, right? In this case, it's a signal of the number of posts uh, on Facebook across the year for a, part, for a particular range of years. Uh, the different colors are actually days. And this is what you see here. Uh, clearly, you will see that there are less posts on Saturday than there is on Tuesday, for example, or Monday. So this is information that already tells you that it, the day in which you are predicting this variable is, is Saturday or is Monday or any other day of the week, and you, uh, you have an expected value. I mean, your prediction should be within that particular range. So this is information that is in the data and that can be extracted. There, there, is, there are more things. So now we know that depending on the day of the week, you will have different values. But also, it may be that according to the time in the year, people are more in front of the computer than, other, than in other periods. Then, for example, let's assume that this, this reflects the, the year trend for uh, those posts. And you will, uh, you will expect to see variations depending on which month of the year you are. And further, uh, in the case of, for example, cryptocurrencies, there is a particular trend, and the trend seems to change. There are moments in which the market is going up, then it's going down, but those trends are rather slow. So you have also this information of whether the prices or the variable that you are trying to predict is, is going down as in a general way across the years, or if it's actually switching and then it's going up. So you can say we are passing from a bear market to a bull market, et cetera, et cetera. So why I'm talking about this? Because if you can put together all this type of uh, information from the, from the data, then you will end up with a model that is more robust. Traditionally, people are using an autoregressive model for this, uh, which are a good model, but they have the problem that if you have data that span for a, a long period of time, then you will need to have a model with many parameters to span across, across the time. Now, to solve this, the paper team created the profit model, and the profit model is incorporating what is the trend of the signal, and the, the trend can be understood what is where the signal is going. Is the signal going down across years? Uh, is going up? Or is actually in a B shape or a U shape across a particular range of, of years? That tells you that there is a slow tendency of the signal towards something. And this is important. Another thing that the model directly does is that model seasonalities, meaning it's possible that in a particular period of the year, the price of Ether normally goes down or goes up. I, or this happens not every year, but every two years you see something going up, or every two years you see that the prices start going down. These seasonalities can actually be incorporated in profit, and it does it by default. And you will see how easy it will be to implement this then. And a final uh, parameter that it takes into consideration is holidays, right? Because uh, the behavior of people change according to the holidays. Now, there are holidays that are global. When it's Sunday, it's Sunday everywhere, right? Uh, or almost everywhere. And, uh, and these, these days of the week, the period 
in a particular region where people are resting or is a working day, etc., may also impact or may help to model better the, the changes in prices. Additionally, the model allows for custom holidays. So if there is a particular, uh, just to give an example, a particular country in the world that is where you know that the trading is actually driving the changes in the price, it is possible that the national holidays are also going to provide some kind of information that is important to predict the price. Now, the question is, well, how do we do this? And the answer to this is very simple. Let me just share my screen again. So once that we have the data and we create this specific data frame that should contain a column that is called DS and another one that is called Y, DS is representing the time, right? In a format of uh, years, months, dates, hours, uh, minutes, and seconds. Uh, for us, is given that the predictions are per hour, it's enough to have GR days, uh, GR's months, dates, and hours. We don't need the specificity of minutes. Now, because we have hours in the DS variable, in the in the timestamp, immediately when we use this for profit, it's going to understand that you want to model uh, the the time of the day as a variable that could affect the price. Then why is just the value of the variable that we want uh, to model. Now, to make the predictions, we are going to, for this example, we do two things just to test how well the, the model is doing. We have the training data and the test data. So basically, we took all the data. We are going to use the all the time that we have until 12 hours previous to, to the last data point that we have uh, as train and the latest 12 hours, we are going to keep it as test data. The reason to do this is that we train the model specifically in the train data, and the portion of the data is never seen by the model, so that the predictions are something that will reflect more or less what you will see in reality. Now, uh, instantiating the profit model is simple. We just import uh, profit from the library of profit that is, is an open source. Uh, a project so you can get it without any problem. We instantiate the model for profit and then we just fit with the data. Notice that we are not indicating any uh, specific parameter because the model is made uh, to walk out of the box, but that doesn't mean that you can go and fine tune. You can go and fine tune by adding many predictors, uh, adding a specific uh, information about holidays if you are, want to predict things in a particular region, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But for the purpose of the competition, this uh, will give you a decent uh, predictor for the for the price. Now, notice that we have only the open, sorry, the closed price as as the data. Is every hour what is the the the, the price at which this window closed? So the last price that, that was seen. And the model is just going to try to learn from the sequence of prices, how they change across time, what are the values, what is the trend, what is the day of the week in which we are doing the prediction, what are the optimal parameters to make predictions to the future. Now, once that this is a fit, that the model is trained, we can go to make predictions. Notice that we are going to make predictions on the data that we left out, that is the test data. Now, <clears throat> to make predictions with profit, the only thing that we need to pass to the model is what are the time, I mean, the time stamps, the dates in which we actually want to know the value. If you are wondering how the model actually can give a specific prediction for particular dates, remember that the date is one of the input parameters. So the time is a regressor in the model. So it's, it's as a feature, you have the time. So the time have an have a importance on how the prediction is going to be done. 
And because of this, then this model is able to predict not only 12 hours in the future, but if you want to know based on this model, what will be the price in one day, two days, three days, even one month, you will be able to do it. Of course, the, the, the warning here is that the further that you go away from the current time point, the worse you will expect that the prediction will be, right? Because the uncertainty increases. Uh, so you obtain the forecast, that is what are the values that the model is predicting, and then we are just being sure that the model could predict the, will give you all the values from the beginning of the date of the time that he knows until the last time point that you give as, as in the predict. So we are here just ensuring that we only retrieve the last 12. That is what we are looking for. And this is the variables that we have as predicted variables. Now we can verify how well our model is doing by just comparing the predicted variables with the actual test data that we left out. And this, as in the example that Juan Pablo was showing, is calculated here using the normalized mean square error. This is going to, uh, the, the goal here is to obtain a mean square error that is as close as possible to zero. That means that there is no difference between the actual values and the predicted. But in reality, of course, this is unlikely to happen. There is always a source of error. There is always some uh, uh, variables that you cannot predict or that you have always uncertainty about this. So expecting a value of zero is not realistic. But expecting a value very close to zero is realistic. It could be realistic. We are predicting in a span time that is only 12 hours. Uh, the values are going to get uh, close to zero in this case. Now, once that this is done and then you are happy with the with the accuracy that you are getting in the test data, the next step is to repeat the fit of the model, but this time you do it with all the data, all the data available until now, right? And then you made the predictions 12 hours in the future from now. That is what you will submit to the competition. And then all the steps that Juan Pablo was uh, describing about how to submit the predictions, uh, are to be followed. Just to to show you, then the first thing is to take the prediction, the 12 values that are basically an array, and to transform them uh, in a file. We are going to transform this in a CSV file, and then we are going to upload it to a decentralized network for uh, storing documents using PyBonder. Uh, how to do this is already explained in the in the in the days of the competition. You can just follow this directly, and you will obtain uh, what you are expecting. Now that we have the file, and the file is already launched, it's in a decentralized network. Therefore, uh, it cannot be modified without changing the cryptographic proof or the hash of the of the document. That's how we know that the data was not modified, and also that's how you know that no one else modif modify your predictions. So that makes the competition fair. Once that we have this file there, then we can use OceanPy and the Ocean Protocol to tokenize the document as an asset. If the, the document is tokenized as an asset, it means that you can uh, charge for, the, for people to be able to access this file. That's why we, we have a data token that is going to be the mean of exchange for access to the document. Uh, we have the asset that represents the document itself, uh, and this is coming, of course, with the NFT that represents the unique next of the document. Once that the, the data is, uh, the data token the, and the asset are created, then uh, you could do the following. You need the judges to be able to download the file so that they can test it. So the next step in here is to send one token to the judges, to the wallet of the judges, so that they can use that token that you are giving them to access uh, the document. They download the document, and then they go through the process of taking your predictions and compare them, then with the actual price on the dates uh, that are defined in the description of the, of the document. 
uh, and that would be that would be all. Notice that this is for the prediction, right? But we will you could also do this not only with data. You could do this with algorithms. You can tokenize with OceanPy algorithms. Let's assume that in this step that I have been showing, you came up with a completely novel alternative to model the price of Ether. And then you realize, well, my model is doing very well most of the time. You can actually put the algorithm there in Ocean Protocol, tokenize, have a data token, and actually sell a token per prediction. So, or to just to sell the access to the algorithm for a period of time. You can say, well, if you buy a token, you have, you can download predictions all the time for the next month or year or something like this. Uh, the advantage of doing this is that you are monetizing your algorithm without actually sharing it with anyone because no one will be able to see what is in, the, uh, in your file. It's completely confidential. You allow people to make predictions, but they don't know how your algorithm is working. And I think this is, uh, this is all for this example. Uh, does someone have any questions? Hi. Uh, yeah, I actually have a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, thank you. Thank you, Jaime, for, for your presentation. Uh, it's very concise information. Um, I'd like to ask first, you talked previously about uh, the trend uh, of a signal over time. Uh, I take that as, as the mean uh, of the signal um, over time. Is that, would, would that be correct? The trend? No, no not the mean, because uh, give it, in the case of uh, the enterprise, the signal is changing across time uh, significantly. It's very volatile. Uh, rather, the trend, imagine that you try to, in the, in the simplest case, imagine that you try to fit a line to the data. So okay. this line, if it's the slope, I mean, if it's going up, it's telling you how ah, the price is going up. If it's going down, then the price is going down. But you can do further by doing something nonlinear. And in the example that I was showing, you saw that the signal was first going down. There was a trend that was showing the, the, the values going down until July or 2015, and then increasing. You have a pattern there that is not necessarily linear, right? You can model this with a, I don't know, with a polynomial of uh, order two or something like this. But in the case of profit, it's taking care of this by default. By default, uh, are you familiar with Fourier? Yes. Yes? Okay, perfect. So by default, what is doing for uh, profit internally is that it's modeling the signal with a Fourier series. And depending on the number of coefficients of that, uh, of that series, you can have things that rep uh, represent more variability than other, in this case, more frequency. But the trend is usually modeled using a, a, a small number of, of coefficients so that it gives you the slow frequency components, it's meaning that the signal is all the components that are changing very slow with time. I hope that this answers your question. Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, okay, uh, now the next question I have is, is about a uh, profit. Uh, what happens if, and also the competition, what happens if I don't, I, I want to use other variables that I, I assume beforehand that that they have something to do with the with the change of the price um, that that I'm predicting. First, for the for the for the um, the prediction challenge, is is it possible to to add more variables to the prediction? And the second question is, would it be possible? Do you know a way to do this uh, to do, to add more variables to the model uh, do, using profit? Yes. Would you recommend it? Uh, definitely. So it's possible to add more predictors uh, to the model. The inconvenience here, in particular with this type of models, is that if you have, in this case, we have only one predictor, right? That is the price, and we want to predict the price. Uh, let's assume that you 
you find out that also the price of Bitcoin is very correlated to the price of Ether and for some reason it provides extra information. And you can use the price of Bitcoin as another predictor. But remember that you are predicting not for the next hour, but for 12 hours consecutive. That means that you need to know the values of the price of Bitcoin for those 12 hours, uh, which you don't. Because if you were to know the price of Bitcoin, also then you will know the price of Ether. Because you cannot guess the values of, uh, directly the values of, B of Bitcoin. Then the way to do this with, uh, with a profit is to create another profit model for Bitcoin. So you first model Bitcoin, you make predictions of Bitcoin, and then you use those predicted values in the, when you are building the, the model for ETH. Of course, there is a disadvantage that this only works well when the variable that you are using as a predictor can be easily modeled, which is likely not the case for Bitcoin. But uh, events as holidays or things that are in the calendar that you can know beforehand when they are going to happen. Let's assume that it's, it's, it's 4th of July, uh, etc. All these things you actually can know when they are going to happen and you can put those as predictors. Otherwise, you will need to to do this, which uh, it's, it's definitely in the, in the case of Bitcoin or these uh, variables that are changing quickly, it's not precisely the most recommended choice. Uh, in that case, you can go for a different type of model. You can go for a neural network or even a, a linear model with, with many outputs to predict directly the 12, the 12 values in the future. Another option that you have is to use a autoregressive model, but uh, multidimensional ones. And these ones are interesting because these models are going to try to find the relationship between the Ether price, the Bitcoin price, and any other thing that you put. And then they will build a prediction that is multidimensional, meaning that you will be predicting Ether, Bitcoin, and all the predictors at the same time. That's something that, that could work in this case. Thanks. Makes sense. Okay. Um, well, the last question is, is more regarding the, the, the ocean protocol. Um, I would be, yeah, let's say I, I achieve a good algorithm <clears throat> to predict uh, the, the, the price of ETH. Uh, what will be the, the, the advantage of using the ocean, like putting, putting this algorithm into ocean instead of, of just using it myself? Ah, ah that, that's a good question. Uh, well, it's an interesting question, and I love it. Uh, the situation is this. Let's assume that I come up with an algorithm, and I see that my algorithm, of course, is not perfect, but at 80% of the time, it predicts the things accurately. Let's assume that it's not about getting the sad value, but the algorithm is 80% of the time tells me, hey, it's going to go down when it actually goes down, and it's going to go up when it's actually going up. Then I understand that your question is, well, if I actually can know this, I can go and trade myself, not to tell to anyone, and then just make money for myself. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. So th there are several things that need to be taken into consideration. First, uh, we are playing with probabilities here. So if we have 80% chance uh, of being correct, means that we have 20% chance of being incorrect. And then it, this is, my answer is based on the theory of gambling. That depends on how deep your pockets are. Because in the string case, then you believe in your algorithm, is 80% accurate, and you put, uh, you have $2,000. You put the $2,000 uh, saying that it's going to go up, but actually goes down, which is a probability, right? It's, a, it's lower than the probability that it's going to go, that you are going to be wrong but it's not zero. And in this case, you lose everything, right? So there is always a risk on, on doing this. And the less money that you have to put on this, the most likely is that you are going to lose it, even at that level of confidence of 80%. So, and that's, there is a complete theory to tell you, yeah, you still can do it by yourself, but then you will have to split the, the total money that you have in very small chunks. 
and to do it repeatedly for a long time. Then you can expect that in the long term, you will make, uh, you will be right 80% of the time and then you will profit. But if you don't want to have this, uh, you want to profit right away without actually incurring in any risk, you could take your algorithm, put it in ocean, and sell the tokens. Then people that are more accustomed with deeper pockets to do this are the ones that could, will take the risks because they, they can and they know that in the, long, in the medium to long term, they will be profiting. And you could be profiting by providing them uh, the prediction. And this is, I love it. And the idea of Ocean is, is just uh, because even if we have the idea that the algorithm is doing more or less okay, I can profit, it's not a straightforward. This is still a lot of things going in into modeling how much actually you can put, what is the time period that you expect actually to get this back. For some people, these are no problems. But for the other person, the initial funds are the problem. Uh, Ocean is allowing you to take a step aside and say, well, I will profit by providing what I know. And the protocol allows you to monetize this in a very easy way. And notice that, of course, as if somebody starts using your, your algorithm and they start profiting, the rest of people will see, which is actually going to make your data token more valuable. Because now everybody knows this actually works. Right? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a positive feedback cycle. Um, I think to add that, uh, Jaime, I think that Overall, the question is great, and Jaime had a very nice answer. It's also possible that you can, um, you know, use the algorithm yourself and um, sell it as a data feed via Ocean. Okay. Uh, sorry, 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 I couldn't hear you. Well, I think I think we lost him. Yeah, I think we lost him. Ah, he's back. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm Trend? back. Okay. I'm back. Okay. Um, Discord crashed. Sorry. Yeah. So maybe if you use it yourself, even for prediction, um, it's not that doesn't it's not that profitable. It's straight out, and you have to do other things on top. Maybe you know uh, you you have it as part of a you know quantitative t trading strategy with that's um, neutral, right? Um, like a lot of hedge funds do, most hedge funds these days, right? Well, um, so in that case, you know it's it's a building block towards your overall trading strategy, but it's not the final thing, right? Um, so you know you can use it as a building block, and others can too. Um, another example is um, uh, maybe there's DeFi protocols out there that want to use this. Um, as a building block for their DeFi protocol. Just like right now, there's DeFi protocols that use Chainlink to get, say, the current ETH price feed or price feed of other tokens. But what if you could get predictions of future price feeds? That's actually very useful for a lot of different um, potential future DeFi protocols. Um, so uh, think of it like an oracle into the future then, right? Um, and but, you know, if you're doing predictions, of course, you need heavy ML, all that. So this is where Ocean can be very helpful, the way that its stack is structured. So overall, it's a great question, um, and um, there are cases where just you know using yourself will be better. But I think, as Haima highlighted, and as I added a bit, um, there's going to be a lot of use cases where having that feed out there with Ocean can be very useful too. So sort of using Ocean as a um, um, DeFi llama in a box, if you will, making it really easy to ship that feed, preserve privacy, and monetize on top. That makes sense. Makes sense. Thank you both. Hi, man, Antoine, for the answer. Thank, Thank you. you. Those are some wonderful questions, and I'd love to see all this user engagement. Uh, do we have any other questions from the group about how to submit, about Facebook profit, for example, um, or more on that thread? Uh, I'd like to hear anyone's input here. Um, if we don't have any questions, oh, Wait. yes. Yeah. yeah, maybe I can ask for those of you here, have, have you guys gone through the guys and gals, have you guys gone through um, the, the, the basic readme to see that you can do it end to end? Um, or 
Um, and if you've you know stumbled at all, you know where where might have you had issues? We'd love to hear. I actually went one went uh, through one and and it went, it went well. Oh, that's wonderful to hear. So you went end to end. Okay, uh, great. Uh, did anyone else sort of uh, try it yet or found any issues? Um, because you know there can be gotchas, right? This is software, and uh, we're always looking for for feedback to see if there's something that helps someone out. Someone. Okay, I guess that's a no. So as you guys go through it, um, do know that you know you can come to this Discord to the um, uh, support um, uh, channel and ask questions there. And um, you know if there's issues that pop up in using the Ocean Stack or in Predictive itself or otherwise, um, and we'll be we'll make a point of getting back to you, of course. So thank you. Definitely, you can always message the dev-support channel or the general-chat channel with any of your questions about the README or about the competition in general. Um, are there any other questions that we have at this time? It sounds like a no. Um, Haroldo, I want to thank you especially for attending and asking three great questions. Um, and for all of our other attendees who are here, thank you so much for being here. Um, again, use our Discord if you have any questions and feel free to follow our uh, Twitter, our social media to stay tuned with more updates about the timeline for the, for the ETH Predict Challenge. Thank you guys. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.